Welcome back everyone, my name is Altamar and we're going to be continuing our let's play of Wrath of the Righteous where we left off last time we're going to go face off against Mudasafen. We do it my way. In theory, it's the next fight. Oh it's you again. How many times have you tried to kill me now, huh? When are you going to realize you can't win? You're stronger than I am of course, Arilu certainly pumped enough crystal essence into your veins. But I'm smarter than you and I have plenty of time to continue my experiments. It's only a matter of time before I have a champion of my own, someone who can match your power. And soon, I'll open my own world wound. Actually, I may open more than one, and that will make me even more powerful. As for you, well, I don't know, or I know I've said this before, but it never gets old. You can't kill me. There's nothing you can do to stop me. The time has come, Alira, Targana whispers. We must act now. Muta softened and imbued me with deadly power. He's making me into a weapon, something he can use against the enemies in the abyss. His enemies in the abyss. Demon lords and anyone else who possesses the power of the Nahindrian crystals. But I am dangerous to him, too. That same Nahindrian power allows him to be revived in a new body after death. I beg you, Alira, for the light of heaven, please let me stop him. Let me die while I am still me, and let my death put an end to our enemy once and for all. Mutus often frowns. He abandons his monologue and tries to overhear the angel's whispered conversation with you. He abruptly grabs a small glass and brings it to his lips. Observe, I will drink this, and my body will die, but I will live again. I will be resurrected in a different location. Do what you must, Targon. I swear that your sacrifice will never be forgotten. What are you whispering about? I'm curious. Let the darkness perish by the light and sword. The demon and the angel lie side by side on the stone floor motionless, but something inside you doesn't want to accept this outcome. This can't be the end. There must be another way. Come back to me. The light gently envelops the fallen angel, bathing her in radiant glory. Visions flash before your eyes. You're in heaven. An angel with shining eyes creates a sword of light and gives it to your, her brother. Then you're in the dark caves beneath Canaris. The sword is lost, and then it is found. It is in your hand. Now you are in Arilu's laboratory. You're fighting side by side with Targana, using your combined power against the architect of the world wound. And now you're reaching out to Targana with that same power, breathing life into her body. What just happened? You brought me back to life. You saved me from the corruption of the Abyss. This is a true miracle. How can there be any doubt that you are an angel, a real angel, as real as any of us, and far more powerful? So you're a miracle worker now. Why am I not surprised? Let's leave this evil place. We'll return to Dresden to rest and heal our wounds, but we will be there for you in your hour of need. Our connection is strong. It's a bond that cannot be broken. That was really cool. And of course, there's traps. I'm glad I was actually kind of expecting a fight. Oh, okay. I was like, are we about to break this thing again? Boots of Magical Whirl. Whenever the wearer of these boots kills a demon for the first time in battle, the next spell becomes quickened, as though using the quickened spell feet. Fancy. More Muta softens notes and random loot. Quickly glance around the room for any perception checks we might have missed. And then we're out of here. Well, that was nice and easy. We're now level 19. We're more... What is this bright light doing here, I wonder? Anywho, let's leave. There's a door here we missed as well. Let's go take a look in there. We'll quick save first, of course, in case it's another ruthlessly bad fight. I won't let you oh, it's imps. Friends. Or methods. Imps? Closets. Don't hold back. Okay. Well, it wasn't a tough fight. Alright, I think we're done. We're free and clear. Actually, didn't, do we need to talk to Beringer? He is there, and he's got a person token above his head. Let's really quickly check that out. He is here. Well, that's another good deed accomplished. I hope it won't be the last one this week. It might be with the amount of rests we need between battles, but... We've successfully saved Targana. We still haven't found the Herald of Ayamade. That's our next major light within thing. Ayamade herself revealed that her Herald was not killed but imprisoned by Baphomet. The Goldwing Angel has played an important role in the Commander's fate. Meeting him face to face will be like looking in a mirror. What will the reflection show? Maybe we should go to Eyes? We don't need to go to the Rift with this group, obviously. The, well, maybe we do need to find the... Actually, we might need to go to the Rift. Maybe we need to go there and 
save the herald? No, because it wouldn't be a Discari that or Descarite that took him. It would have been a Baphomet person. So, hmm. Do we go to the Spinner of Nightmares place? Maybe? We could. We could also come down here and do the Bladesmith's Workshop or the Petrified Travel as for agents. Who cares about that? There's also the place of execution up here. We should probably... You know what? I'm not really sure what's going to be there. In the other group, it's Arushale who's there. Um, let's fight them. We could use the experience, I think. Oh, this is actually a large group. Okay. You require my unbiased opinion? We should move. Do we still have no. You are my favorite. Let's get one more of these up and running. This is a pretty big fight, I think. My other group had trouble with this, but it was before we got Mythic Rank 9, which made that group unstoppably powerful. Um do we just open up with a Syrico, maybe? Of all the things I think Syrico is probably the best one to open up with. Is it just the one? Prepare yourself. The other group had like nine Vavakia demons. Just gonna wait it out until they come to us or not. I guess we could go in there though. Only one's getting hit, so maybe there's only the one. This spell works no, there's definitely more. There's a second one and the Nabazu. Which just kind of walked into melee. We missed it with all of our attacks. Five foot step away, just shoot it in the face. That was not a five foot step away, I did that wrong. Five foot step away, we can just blast it with some hellfire. Didn't work great. And Zila missed most of her attacks. What is her attack bonus? Plus 30 on the first hit. That's not the worst, I guess. Desna, guide my hand. One Vavakia demon dead. There's a second one there. Let's kill this one. We'll do this and we'll do the um, grove and then we'll head down to the Spinner of Nightmares and uh, eyes in the next video, I think. There's still two succubuses up here not doing anything, too. What did it just cast? Whatever it cast, it did a lot of damage. I will save that pet from death. God, we suck at hitting this thing. Hey, you got knocked down. That's nice. I will resist. And she missed every attack. I don't know why none of the other things are doing anything in this fight. It almost died. There we go. Has some sort of attack ability. I don't know what it does, but the succubuses are succubi are just standing there, not doing anything. Two hundred and three critical hit in the back of the head. Let's just leave. We can loot as we leave the area. It's a weird encounter. They didn't attack us properly. Actually, everything is collectible here. 
All the loot, I'll take it all. What is our Mythic 9 ability with this particular group? Maybe we should be focusing on getting that. Uh, if we look at our Mythic Path, we get Improved Angelic Halo, which can make it much better. Mythic Ability and Summon Spirit Guardians. And then the last one is Sword of Holy Healing and Greater Sword of Heaven. Interesting. Cool. Well, let's go up to the Place of Execution. I don't know what's going to be here. I'm really curious. It might just be all of the demons that we fought there previously with the other group, minus Arushale, I guess. We do it my way. Which means we're gonna need some buffs. I'm always ready. Like the sword and like a less spell. And like haste, and that should be good, I think. Oh, yes, what? All right, let's go see what's up here. Oh, it is just the Balor. So far. It's also the Calavicus, which is fine. We're going to hit Fatigued soon. In fact, some of our people are already fatigued, so I'm going to go ahead and burn our Guarded Hearth here. Peace. There's also Bobows around somewhere. I don't see though there's gonna be Bobows in there. Oh, there's one there. Did a bunch of damage to the Balor. That's important. Some rocks just showed up. At least one that I can see. Are you kidding me? Did it come in and just do like 200 damage in one hit and immediately kill our, <laughs> kill our leader? That was amazingly stupid. Let's go take a look at that. I'm just kind of curious as to exactly what happened there. Ran in, smacked her for 143 damage, and she died. How did she only have 143 damage? That's weird. Okay, well, that's fine. This time we'll just do better, I guess. Um, delay until after land. Delay until after land. Delay until after land. Some Babows will get to go, but I don't care. Let's get Guarded Hearth back up. Damn it, Arushalai is not quite in position. Actually, if we five footstep, we should be in it. Decent first round of combat. Don't hold back. Maybe go tank that for a moment. Oh, he knocked it down. That makes it even easier. Can't believe the Clavic has killed us in one hit. That is some BS right there. All right, let's move up to here. So there's the Babows. We missed a whole lot of attacks there, and how come they get to go? That just oh, that, we did a we got a lot of damage out there. Maybe that's what killed us. We got took a bunch of damage from something. Yeah, there it comes in. We can heal with Lan. He should be able to get into range. There we go. It's going to explode and deal some damage, probably. Strike. Explodey. You should have run. Knock that one down again. Lots of attacks. 
Ember. Blessed Wall. I think there's a bunch of spell resistance that made that less cool than it should have been. Right. Missed all those attacks. That was a much better storm bolt. Cool. You should have listened to reason. Um what can we do? Let's just generally heal everyone a little. Which one's the most hurt? Kill the Clavicus. Guide my hand. Not the best attack round, but fine. This Don't hold back. That one's pretty hurt. Something just died. Probably a babao. Let's just keep... Oh, nothing got hit. That sucked. Another one dead. Just two rock assassins left. We could holy fire them, I guess. No, we'll hit our own thing. Oops, this was a bad choice. Sorry, Lan. Make your peace. Strike. I am your end. That one died really fast. Good. How are you not dead? All right. Let's just fire snake through them. Stupid spell resistance. Maybe she can fire snake through them. Maybe she doesn't have any fire snakes. Damn you, concealment. There we go. One left to go. You should have run. It failed a bit at its attack roll, which is fine. And now we just have to fight against its stupid concealment. I know we have true sight and stuff like that we could use, but we're not going to. Prepare yourself. Awful. This will hurt. There we go. Everything is dead that needs to be dead. Grabbing the one weapon of value. And if there's anything else to loot here, there's some loot back down here. It's horrible. Aha! More tokeny things. We need those to solve tokeny things. What is that belt thing we just picked up? Slabs. Helmet. Sturdy. Snoot. Plus 12. Competence bonus on athletics and mobility skill checks. And if it's worn by an animal companion, it also grants a plus three dodge bonus to AC against range attacks. Fancy. All right, let's leave. We, do it my way. we successfully killed some demons, picked up some good items. And now we can go to do one more small thing, I guess. And then in the next video, we'll do the Spinner of Nightmares quest. Hopefully we can get that done. Desolate. Thicket. We need to go to Sinister Mansion. I think this demon army is moving. There's somebody on the road. Who? Is it a good thing on the road? Doesn't seem to be. If you dare. This is a big... Actually, it's not as big as I thought. Never mind. I thought it was a big area, but it's not really that big. There's Juba lost. Unexpected sounds break the menacing, monotonous atmosphere of the world wound. Business like chatter, the lazy neigh of ponies, and the clatter of instruments, and rising above everything else, a rather expressive voice. A flying ship? How could you even think of such a or think of proposing such a thing? Next, you'll tell me we should travel by portals or streak across the sky in a winged chariot. And don't look at me like that. I know what you mean. That this card had experienced things you wouldn't see in your worst nightmare. That it's time to retire and put its wheels up beside the fire, axles creaking as it tells its cart grandchildren stories of wild youth. That I can afford a more reliable transportation than this wreck. To say this, I will say that great explorers and discoverers set out on expeditions on foot, and they didn't complain about it. And yet you can even survive comfortable ground-based travel in an ordinary cart. And with that, the owner of the expressive voice turns to you and nods as if he didn't expect to see anyone else. Jubilost Narthropple. 
I'm just passing through. The name is familiar to you. Northropel is an eccentric gnome scholar from Absalom, a traveler, explorer, popularizer of science, journalist, and author of a dozen books and countless articles. Due to his overly sharp tongue, he's been sentenced to death or exiled by no fewer than three or four nations on Galarian. Every year, new rumors surface of his death at the hands of some offended monarch or other. I've heard about you. You're a scientist and explorer, aren't you? Jubilost Northropel, scientist, traveler, cartographer, journalist, lecture. Ponies are so cute and chubby, just like suit. May I pet your ponies, please? The delighted Ember seems not to have noticed she interrupted Jubilost's list of titles. Jubilost stops short and glares at Ember with indignation. Ember looks back at him with innocent devotion, waiting for his permission. Oh, well, fine, you may pet the ponies, girl. He looks indifferent. Now then, where were we? I'm Jubilost Northropel, a scientist and journalist at your service. Nenio, absorbed in his scribbling of notes, raises her head at the name of at the mention of the name Jubilost Northropel. The author of the distillation of magical liquids in the field? Yes, that's me. I take it I have the honor of speaking to a fellow scientist. With a fellow scientist and a successful rival, a future successful rival, I intend to take your place in the department at the College of Mysteries. On my way to the headmaster's seat, naturally. By the way, the blood of mythic demons cannot be distilled by your method, and neither can the slime of an ordinary carnivorous blob. Obviously not. Jubilus doesn't seem offended. On the contrary, he's looking at Nenya with growing interest. My distillation method was developed for distillations carried out on the material plane. For liquids originating on the material plane. Demon blood does not meet these conditions. For extraplanar liquids, I've developed a new method described in my article in the first issue of National Alchemy in 4817. We've got a full century to go before 4817. Er, yes, of course that's correct, but the article was scheduled for publication in advance, Jubilas says, but he sounds uncertain. To be fair, I do not require data on extraplanar entities in my, for my encyclopedia. Therefore, demon and their blood, demons and their blood, as such, do not interest me. But I have yet, or I have not yet finished the section on cult alchemists. The main focus of their work is potion based on demon blood. To support my thesis that the average cult alchemist lacks any real knowledge of the subject, I need to make a breakthrough in this field. An approach worthy of a true scientist, I wish I could linger and try and reconstruct my method from memory, but I don't have any time to spare. Jubilos sighs with obvious regret. So, you're an encyclopedist. An encyclopedist? And at the same time, a practitioner and field researcher. That's right, I'm Nenio. I just need to clarify a couple of details, I'll figure out the rest on my own. Of course, I'd be happy to be of assistance. If Even if nothing comes of it, we can continue this discussion by correspondence. I'll listen in silence. It's certainly possible, but let's return to the issue at hand. To what degree should I saturate the blood with steam during distillation? My previous attempt resulted in an explosion, which suggests the durability of standard distillation apparatus is not, within li or not without limit. To what degree saturate what? Jubilas expression changes drastically. You're using direct distillation? I am. Dry steam distillation is not a viable option. What absolutely, utterly inconceivable nonsense. In my second article in the National Alchemy, I proved, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that direct distillation is not suitable for magical liquids, and only a properly isolated steam coil allows us to consider the distillation process effective. He glares at Nenio. In the section of my encyclopedia detailing the uses of distillation apparatuses, I completely unravel every argument of your work on the benefits of dry steam distillation. Huh. Jubilos folds his arms in indignation, indignation, then his expression shifts to boredom. So, you're interested in distillation, dear colleague? Excellent. Then subscribe to the National Alchemy and wait until my article reaches these parts. I'm afraid I'm in a rush and I cannot offer you any advice on this subject. So where do we leave off, Commander? I, uh, what's wrong with your... Actually, I have one of your books. Would you autograph it for me? Hmm. An unexpected request, but admittedly a pleasant one. Of course I will. Why not? Jubilos takes the worn book from you, and his amiable expression suddenly vanishes. Cooking Almanac of the Inner Sea by Jubilos Northrubble. A culinary al almanac of the dozens of articles on practical alchemy, history books, geographical rev reference books, and brilliant political essays of a Polish, she chose a cookbook. Jubilos glares at you, then sighs heavily. Of course, any recognition is good. You want culinary? You want a culinary almanac? So here's what you get. Here you go. With best wishes, the author. What's wrong with your cart? Oh, I suppose I should have led with this. Sadly, my cart is stuck, and my assistant, Jubilos, casts a peevish look at the three gnomes shuffling awkwardly nearby. As it turns out, are completely incapable of applying the most simple practical skills and fixing this blasted wagon. I would approach. Or I'd appreciate your help, Commander. All you need to do is attach the wheel, clear the road, and calm the poor ponies. The world wound causes them great stress. Heard rumors of your death. Jubilos shrugs in an emphatic, dismissive way. These rumors never stop. I'm not a desk jockey, but a field researcher and a cartographer. I spend most of my time on the road, stopping only briefly to finish a paper or give a lecture. Every time the unknown 
of mysterious lands swallows me, my detractors jump at the chance to spread stories of my death. I've been credited with perishing in the depths by the eye of Abedango, meeting my end at the hands of the whispering tyrant when last wall fell, and many far less impressive deaths, such as being drowned by kobolds in a river in a place not marked on any map. Hogwash. <laughs> That's from Kingmaker. I do not imagine myself immortal, but so far, I have been able to avoid meeting Phrasma. There is still so much to learn about this world. Jubilus' speech seems confident, but there's no doubt. There's no reason to doubt his words. Yet he mentioned the fall of Lastwall as a well-known fact, but you know for certain this nation is alive and well. You just happen to be passing through so deep in the world wound? What's bothering you? Of course I didn't mean to say this happened by accident. Passing through simply means I do not intend to conduct extensive research or educational work here. Just making a few observations here and there. How do you know I'm the commander? I haven't introduced myself. Jubilas adjusts his glasses. Obviously, it's about my acumen. Surely you didn't expect a renowned scientist to be so ignorant as not to recognize the most significant historical figure of this region and era. I'll see what I can do. That is wonderful. And don't think me an ungrateful load. I'll be sure to mention your generosity in the article I'll write about this encounter. I'm going to take notes and you may get started on the repairs, Commander. Arushlai will fix the wheel. After 10 minutes of work and a little bit of ingenuity, the wheel slides back in place, none the worse for wear. A thought just occurred to me, Commander, says Jubilast, who barely pays attention to your attempts to repair his cart. What do you think of your place in history? You're a mortal who acquired the powers of an angel of heaven. Do you feel this is where you belong? Perhaps my fate has been far from ordinary, but I'm satisfied with the path I've chosen and the person I've become. And are these... are those forced to follow you happy? Those who depend on you? Jubilast adjusts his glasses. Or are you one of those people who goes ahead without bothering to ask the opinions of others? Then again, who am I to lecture one of the greatest figures of our time? Be on your way, and Desma will aid you. Just I'll just stand here by the road and take some notes. Do you revere Desna too? You must have traveled far and seen much. The goddess that smiles on wanderers. Ah, Sister Desnan, and a very unusual and of a very unusual kind. Jubilas looks at Arushalay with curiosity. Yes, I've been to many places and I hope to visit many more, but I'm surprised at your admiration. Does Galarian truly overshadow the wonders of extraplanar travel for you? In the past I did not travel, I hunted. I saw no wonders, and I did not understand the delight of walking the road, seeing new places, or making new acquaintances. So you have surely seen more than I have, because I could not see. My eyes were closed. And I wish you to keep them open and see all you wish to see. It's worth it to spend a lifetime traveling, or even more than one. Let's try and calm the ponies. The ponies seem oddly intelligent, and you get the uneasy feeling the ponies are playing along with your attempts to calm them, chuckling to themselves. Still, they obediently stand where they're supposed to, ready to pull the cart. Hey, Mr. Northropple, did you fall asleep or something? You haven't said any snide comments or philosophical rants for a good six minutes now. Something is clearly amiss. What was that? An attempt to practice your wit at my expense? Not bad for an amateur. Wit is a useful quality. Sadly, it's not always accompanied by the intelligence to assess whom you can safely mock and whom you should leave alone. I'll try and clear the way for the cart. We only have a 14. I guess our pet doesn't count. We might fail this one. And we did. You managed to clear a path? Some of the path. There's even a chance, albeit not much of one, that the wagon could squeeze through. Said I did what I could. What? Oh, yes. Well, I suppose I should be on my way. How unfortunate. Yeah, I haven't, says, I haven't yet satisfied my curiosity, but what can you do? Time waits for no one. Best of luck. I hope you come to these parts again. My apologies, but a thousand more discoveries await me. I can't stay in any one place for too long, but I'm glad to have met you. This conversation provided me with much food for thought. Farewell, Commander. Having already turned to his cart, Jubala suddenly slapped himself on the forehead. I almost forgot. I was asked to give you this. A golden toad. Wait, everything's illusionary? We could try and do this checks again and see if we can do the, el or the uh, athletics check. I am kind of curious to see if we can pull it off. Let's take a quick check of it. See what we can do. I'm gone. We'll just breeze through the conversation up to that point. And let's run through card. Maybe on the commander. See what I can do. Let's try the athletics one first and see if we can get it out of the way. Did we get it? Yay, your, office, your efforts are not in vain. The pile of junk blocking the path has been swept aside. This is the first one. Ok. 
Okay, we'll do that one. Let's try and calm the ponies. It's the next hardest one. Did that one, then we'll fix the wheel. That's it, I did what I could. What, oh yes. Oh, also the same thing. I have a feeling there's something you're not telling me, Mr. Narthropple. There are some strange slips in your speech and demeanor. Hmm, Jubilos pauses. I must admit, acting is not one of my talents. I was hoping to casually run into you in a completely natural way than ask a few questions, but it's strictly to appear natural when it's a chance encounter in the middle of the world wound and you come from the future. Jubilos pauses again for dramatic effect. Yes, exactly as I said, some of my friends, many in number, but acting as one, can do the most curious things to time. I humbly asked them for an opportunity to meet the legendary commander of the Fifth Crusade in person. I desperately wanted to take a few notes on such a faithful figure in Galarian's history. For my article on the Age of Lost Omens, I hope you're not angry about this small masquerade. And even if you are angry, I'm still satisfied. Hope you come back again. Same thing, the Golden Toad. And he just teleports away. Alright, well, that was an interesting little encounter. Got some demon blood and some other kind of magical creature. Cool. And that appears to be it. Let's quickly check over here and then we'll go do the clearing. And then that will be the end of our video. And in between videos, I'll make my way over to the other side so we can go do the blacksmith, or bladesmith, not blacksmith, for the Finian quest. And then, uh,. Yeah, that'll be good. The desolate thicket. We're all fatigued. We'll rest when we reach the uh, thicket really quickly. <laughs> My dog is... Crying at the door to the off. Oh, we can't rest. I mean, we could rest and then we can teleport back home. It'll be a, a tiny bit bad. We'll be slightly corrupted. Yeah, we're just over corruption level one. So we get 15% spell failure, minus two on wisdom and intelligence. Kind of sucks, but the next fight's not very hard, so. I know I'm clicking no. I just like wanted to say first. Let's uh, do a fight. It's time to act. We are slightly corruptioned one, I'm but that's prepared. okay. We'll deal with it. Huh? We'll oh, just get rid of that by using this. I'm all ears. And I'm what else? We'll take a sword thing. That's really all we need to do. And You're haste, I think. That should be enough to win this fight. Let's uh, open up with a Rouge Laser so and get a surprise round. Get another <laughs> well, this is going to be a very short fight. Don't hold back. Hey, there's loot there. Strike. The Inheritor. She is hasted. Let's just get her up there. I don't think we're going to be able to do a... Nah. Once we move this over. Okay. Hey, there's a Calavicus there. I didn't even notice that one. Well, I'm not really concerned about these guys, so we're going to go fight the Calavicus. Bobao is almost dead. The light take you. Sila just laid waste to that one. I will resist. The Clavicus just died in a single hit. Actually, let's just move up to here and then just go. Stormbolts. 
that's pretty much all of them dead now. We just have to the finish them off. Alright, so the only thing I've noted in this area that I found with the other group is this little discovery. thing right here. State or statue of a chicken created in an artful, absolutely non-insulting matter. This is a very long letter, but uh, if you found this note, I want you to know art is pain. My name is Floggy the Sculptor, and the moment I was born, the goddess Shaylin struck me with the most horrible curse of all. She gave me a craving for art. I became a sculptor's apprentice when I was seven, and by 25, I'd already become a reputable and ambitious debutant. Alas, this is not bring me any happiness. My first piece of art, a composition called The Last Aslanti Takes a Step into the Lands of the Axis, caused a stir, and most of the reactions were shouts of indignation. For some reason, the public decided that my depiction of a rodent, or Aridin, bore a striking resemblance to the chairman of Absalom's Grand Council, Lord Wars. They accused me of being corrupt and subjected me to a shameful beating right at the grand opening. I attributed this calamity to my youthful inexperience, and I intended to turn the tables. To avoid further accusations, I chose a topic that was pronouncedly distant from Absalom's realities. So I depicted the Zhen goddess warrior Shizuru. How could I have known that so many people from Shanzai, Shanzai live in Absalom? And why did none of them warn me that the name of the goddess is actually spelled and pronounced Shizuru? Or that but mis misspelling it is a great blasphemy? How could I even suspect that one part of my audience would be outraged by the excessive bellicosity of my statue? The other would be insulted by its extreme femininity, and the rest would brand me a parasite trying to make money off of undisguised cultural appropriation. Feeling desperate, I turned to abstractionism, and when the time had come to give a name to the, my statue, I chose a random set of letters, consonants only, but caused even more trouble. That very night, a bunch of strangers clad in hooded black robes broke into my house, threatened me with daggers, and demanded I never again try to depict their mysterious deity or mention one of its secret names. Having failed at gaining glory among the educated and sophisticated public, I fled north to Sarkoris. There, among the simple people, my talent would finally blossom. I showed them wooden sculptures whose crude grotesqueness emanated strength and primordial power of the earth things they were supposed to understand. So they beat me up for good measure and kicked me out of their settlement, right after they broke my favorite chisel and spat in my travel bag. Until this day, I have no idea what it did to offend them. By that time, I'd already learned not to ask pointless questions. The desperation of it all made me feel bitter and stubborn, but fate challenged me, so I accepted the challenge. I had found my mission. I wanted to create a statue that would insult no one. After several weeks of contemplation, I decided to sculpt a chicken. Yes. A simple chicken. What could be offensive about chickens? They are yellow, they chirp, there's definitely nothing bad about that. Oh, I couldn't have been more wrong. A week after my sculpture was showcased to the audience, a group of grim-looking people came and fell to their knees before it. They pronounced my statue to be an idol of the D-Day they worshipped, the Infernal Duke, Yazrael. It turns out that there is a Duke of Hell whose unholy symbol is a chicken. More and more cultists came to see my sculpture every day, and then another kind of public arrived, tough knights with long swords who chopped down all the admirers of my talent into pieces. After they were done with the slaughter, they started searching for the person who created the blasphemous chicken. For me. I fled, taking my unfortunate creation with me. I dragged the statue as far as I could and left it in the wilderness. Hope no one finds it here, although since you're reading this, my hope was futile. In this case, you should know art is pain. Beware of the people who worship chickens, and equally, beware of those who hate them. And here's the main thing I was trying to say. I didn't mean to hurt anyone's feelings with the statue. Floggy, the sculptor. Poor Floggy, I feel so bad for him. He had a tough go of things. There's also a corpse over here we missed. Just some random loot. Alright, I think that's it. We're out of here. Let's leave. And that's also going to be the end of our video. We're going to teleport... Where's the zone trial? There it is. Um, we're going to teleport back to Dresden so we can rest and get rid of our corruption. It's kind of important. And maybe buy some armies if we can. If there's uh, armies for sale. Be nice to see our first champions. Yeah, we can. Okay, so let's go teleport back to Dresden. Where are... Where's this army going to hit, actually? So if they come up this way, down here... I guess they could reach all the way to Dresden without having hit any of our strongholds. Interesting. Alright, well, let's see what we got here. Where's our army? Why isn't it in the base? Just, uh... Oh, I can't teleport back. Oh no, that's okay. 65 days to get there. It'll get there long before any attacks happen. We do need to move some of our secondary armies though so they don't die. This army is stuck where it is. 
This army is on the wrong side not to die from anything coming in, possibly, so I'm going to move it up here where it's safer. Cool. Alright, for now, I'll leave you guys here. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. Oh, there's a see you next time. Take care.